the super energetic and today very well rested Shazad Khan. How Love are it. you doing? I'm absolutely perfect. Thank you very much for such wonderful uh, remarks and comments <laughs> early in the morning. I feel more great now. Even though that I woke up like really fresh and I woke up at 6.30 today, ladies and gentlemen, thanking Allah that, hey, you know what? You've given me this opportunity to pray Fajr in time. Mashallah. But unfortunately, oh. it was so cold, I couldn't do it. So I had to oh. do it at 7.30, you know. So, <laughs> Allah, right. please forgive me for that. But ladies and gentlemen, for everybody who's out there, you know, <laughs> from whatever religion you are, please make sure that you're following all your religion obligations. <laughs> That's something I just want to focus on primarily. But other than that, Shiza, how are you doing? I'm doing absolutely great. Thank you so much for asking. <laughs> Trying to cope up with the cold over here. And you know what, Shiza, you were right yesterday about the rain thingy. Yeah. Yes, it is going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, expected to, and the med department is also going to give out the notifications to this it weekend. It was in the news last night. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so this weekend it might, and it may be raining as well. Imagine how crazy it's going to get, uh, because of course it's going to be snowing in northern parts of the country, especially North Punjab, and then it's so close to Islamabad as well, so it is definitely going to get so cold. I want you all to stay safe out there, and uh, well, along with your cold SOPs, follow the COVID <laughs> SOPs as well. Exactly. Please do that. And, and you know what, Shiza, in relation to that, the only thing I'm going to say is because Shiza, ladies and gentlemen, is the sort of person who loves rain. I'm the sort Love. of person who loves sunlight. You know, I want to be out there in the sun. And I, mean, I don't like sunlight. I mean, <laughs> ever since we started doing this show, this is something we've always kind of talked about as well. But for me, you know, a lot of people were calling me and were like, yaar, Shazad, they're badi sardi hai, yaar, and all of that. <laughs> and I was like, why are you even getting out of your houses? Just go onto your bed, you know, take the quilt up. And that's it, just rest yourself. Because we certainly do not have central heating in our houses. We need to be on the bed under the quilt. Yeah. That's it. So I don't know whether I'll be going out even if it's raining or not. I'm not going out. You know, I'd really, for the sake of winter, <laughs> of course, because I'm going to miss it, man, when the yeah. summer comes again. Uh, it reminds me of a meme. I wish I could. I would have shared it with my producer so you guys could see it. I'm just going to tell you a gist of it. It said that for all the people who say they love winters, they're the ones who never get out of their houses. Yeah. Which is true because, of course, if you do step out on a... You know, crazy winter day, you will never love it again. And I, I, and I always say I love winters, I love winters, but I, I don't do. know. Okay, I just need to be in my comfort zone, ladies and gentlemen, whenever I'm at home. But other than that, there are a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen, who are away from home and they want to do quite a lot for home as well. I mean, in that term, we are obviously talking about the expat community. We were in conversation with somebody from Seattle yesterday and today even, ladies and gentlemen, we will be in conversation with people. One of them happens to be from Seattle, but what they're doing is something really amazing because that will really make us settle into the technology <laughs> sector. I think that's how I want to put it. Yeah. So, uh, so in July 2021, ladies and gentlemen, these group of amazing people, they call themselves Pakistan Seattle Tech Connections. They actually arranged a Pakistan Tech Exposure trip. Mm -hmm. And what they did was that they actually had 20 plus entrepreneurs coming down to Pakistan to make sure that whether how much opportunity is out there for anybody and everybody and mm. then obviously how the con country or how they will c contribute to countries economics as well and since we do have tax zones by the government and then a lot of relief is given to kind of come and invest in the technology sector so what they did was that they picked up people from amazon facebook google mm -hmm. microsoft and they brought them straight to pakistan and they made sure that they're going to have a word with them whether we can kind of contribute or not which is absolutely brilliant because I can now proudly say for the mo for more than three years that I've been doing this show with you, Shazad, I've been in conversation with, of course, so many expats and just almost every day getting the stat, you know, st uh, our hands on to the stats of how much remittances we're getting, the ease of business now and how a lot of expats are now finally in this phase of their life thinking to return to Pakistan, which yeah. never happened. This is my favorite part. Shazad doesn't agree with me. Reverse brain drain is going to happen. This is absolutely my favorite part. But just a small anecdote. You know, yesterday I was at an event, yeah. which was about a similar thing. Of course, you know, bringing technology and expertise wow. from different um, areas you of Europe. You went to an event to without telling me? Wow. Uh, well, I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so... Well, that was that, which made me realize how absolutely brilliant, of course, we have been talking about it, expats are. They are bringing all the expertise of architectural, uh, well, architecture from Italy to Pakistan and wow. going to build the largest landscape, uh, skyscrapers over here 
in Punjab and different parts of the country as well with the partnership with the government. So definitely the, the scope is so huge. I mean, I was definitely impressed. And then these people that we're going to be in conversation with, bringing the best of the brains from the U.S. and, of course, different parts of the world eventually. But I, I think they're going to expand. Exactly. So That's going to be my Shiza, first question, though. Yeah, which is why, Shiza, you repeat the same thing over and over again, only if you know that there's more opportunity out Absolutely. there and that we really need to tap onto that segment as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, what they did was that they actually held another, which is still going on, Pakistan Tech Exposure Trip, December 2021. On the 22nd and as we speak as of now on the 23rd as well it is still going on as well what's happening what's the latest and how are they contributed to pakistan's uh, te pakistan's technological diaspora is something we'll be talking about so we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody who happens to be a startup investor and advisor he happens to be mr Taimur rashid hello assalamu alaikum good morning how are you wa alaikum salam shazad and shazad pleasure to be here ex amazon and ex microsoft ladies and gentlemen yes we're in the game all right we're in the business <laughs> alongside mr Taimur. We're very lucky that we've actually been joined by the president of Open Global. He is Mr. Mazum Chaudhry. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Walaikum salam. Great to be here. Thank you very much for Thanks. joining us. Wonderful to have you. First things first, whose brainchild was it? Mm. <laughs> so this brainchild was actually a group of us that um, have a shared passion for, you know, seeing a strong and prosperous Pakistan. And so it represents uh, a group of us in Seattle that one day were thinking, well, how can we, how can we contribute? Like we see so much activity going on, uh, startup investing, uh, great ideas. In fact, if you look at some of the Seattle folks, they started their own companies okay. and they've hired back office, uh, you know, software engineers, marketing folks, all in Pakistan. You know, one very good example is a company called Educative, right? Yeah. Who's this, the CEO of, his, uh, of the company is Fahim uh, Mia. And he started this great idea about democratizing software development. And he started that with his brother in Seattle. And they've expanded their operations. They have about 200 plus people in Lahore. And so we started seeing this trend of, you know, budding entrepreneurs within the Seattle ecosystem with great ideas, starting these companies, and then hiring people in Pakistan. And so a group of us, and we call ourselves, you know, Pak Seattle Tech Connections, it's a group of entrepreneurs and professionals that work at big tech from Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Facebook. And we said, hey, we're, we're going to be going to Pakistan. Why don't we just rally a group of folks, right? and create a connection with the Pakistani ecosystem. And that started off as a two-day thing in the summer of this year. Yeah. And a very good set of meetings and I had. Amidst COVID, right? Amid, yeah, during yeah. COVID, during COVID, yeah. So we followed all our protocols. We made sure we were safe, you know, all masked up. we trust up. you. <laughs> yep, exactly. We had our vaccination cards and so uh, proof of everything. Um, so we did a two-day uh, meeting. We met um, a variety of institutions from Special Technology Zones Authority, uh, Ministry of IT and Telecom, the National Incubation Center as well, too. Yeah. So there's 20 of us from Seattle that came in the summer, um, sort of unsure of what to expect, but just to create a connection with the community. Yeah. Hmm. And when we, we had a successful set of meetings, right? I think for us, the biggest advantage was we got this awareness of what's going on. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So what did you tell all the people that you were bringing here? The idea you did have in your mind. <laughs> yeah. But uh, first of all, it's COVID, right? And then it's, your, <laughs> it's the first type of thing ever that you're going to do in terms of management as well. Yeah. What did they say? Of they must have a lot of questions, right? What are we going to do? Are we going to speak to people? Are we going to be, well, um, you know, are we going to have a TED talk over there? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In just two days, what can you do? Well, in, in two days, you can do actually quite a bit. And, okay. and I think the biggest thing you can do is bring awareness uh -huh. and so what we brought is we said look at we have people that have been pioneers in cloud computing okay um, I myself spent 10 years at AWS okay uh, right when it started it was like you a little working. startup within Amazon mm. today it's a 56 billion dollar run rate business yeah. right mm. uh, we've had people that have built some of these services operated them at scale so if you think about the knowledge and experience that this group brought you know they they opened their arms wide and said please mm. share that information with us exactly. and I think I think that's what the leaders here in Pakistan are looking for, True. is there's this renewed sense of energy about how to look at things differently, right? And, and thank True. you very much for kind of, you know, giving us of, uh, an overview of what actually happened. But what were the outcomes of, you know, the, the tour which actually took place in July 2021? I'll move on to you, President Open Global, please. Yes, so a great transition, because what happened in 2021, July, 
Um, I wasn't part of that team. Okay. Uh, so they came back to the U.S. all fired up, full of energy, said, hey, there's thing happening, magic is happening in Pakistan, and all of us should be part of that ecosystem. So I lead an organization called Open, which is the organization of Pakistani entrepreneurs. Okay. Uh, we have 18 chapters, one of the largest Pakistani successful stories, uh, success stories are part of this network. Um, in terms of data points, just in the past four years, we have $10 billion plus of exits okay. within this network. Great. So the goal was that, okay, the Seattle folks went there and got fired up. How can they get that energy transferred to all the uh, Pakistanis uh, globally? Yeah. So since then, Open Seattle got formed, re-energized. So they're part of the uh, Open Seattle chapter. They were one of the 18 chapters that we have. And, uh, and uh, now there are a lot, so there are folks there um, in the US, they're, they're there, but their heart is in Pakistan. Yeah. They're passionate about giving back, right? How do you bring all of them together under one platform uh, so that they can uh, give back? And once you connect these folks, magic happens at the back end. Exactly, Absolutely. it does. And you know, which is why I'm sorry, but I might be diverting a little bit from the topic, but this is really important because for all of the, uh, those people who actually used to live in Pakistan, the expat community themselves, their heart does belong over here and yeah. they have every right to do whatever they want for their country and for their people. But do, don't you think that just sending in the remittances was just okay or fine? Or do you think that now it's about time that we teach them how to fish as well? I think that's the concept which you're working on now that rather than just sending in money, let's create something, let's give them job opportunities, let's contribute towards the economy of the country. And how do you want to do that is something which we'll primarily focusing on as well. So imagine that you had these meetings and then what came out of it, you know, so in mm. December 2021, before this trip, you know, because you're doing another session, it's going on today as well, it started <clears> yesterday. <throat> what has had happened and, uh, and what do you think will happen after this trip as well? Let me just share an example of what happened yesterday. Sure. Okay. We were at the Ministry of IT and a conversation happened that there are uh, about 30,000 computer science graduates that come out of uh, Pakistani universities. Um, they need mentorship, right? And on an ad hoc basis, our heart is in Pakistan. People mm. are doing their own uh, whatever they want to give back, however they want to give back, mm. through ad hoc one-on-one -on -one mentorship. How do we scale it, right? So one good thing, great thing that came out amongst many other things yesterday was how do we programmatize this, right? Leverage the whole ecosystem under the open and other organizations that are doing a phenomenal job. Mm. Put a structure where how we, in an organized way, mentor, coach, uh, provide jobs, provide internships, and up-level them. There. Pakistan is full of entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tell everyone, even if they are not in a uh, area that they're focusing on, but yes, so this is... Um, there's a dearth of jobs, obviously, we really need to be entrepreneurs now. And oh, yeah. You know, that's, that, that's a brilliant observation, and it's absolutely true. Pakistan is full of entrepreneurs, but it's only been, in all honesty, or maybe because now I'm in the system, so I feel it this way as well, ever since this uh, PTI government came into being, we've been seeing uh, ease of business, right? actually a conducive environment where entrepreneurs or like-minded people can actually take true. the risk. True. Where you said there are hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs, and it's absolutely true, hardly few of them may actually have a successful business. Some of them, most of them will go down the drain in a few months or a few years. But the risk of it, they're really ready to take it in, in this environment. What do you think has changed? And do you agree with me? Do you think the system has changed? Let's begin with you. I, I think the system has changed. And I think one good example of that is the Special Technology Zones okay. uh, Authority, right? And so we had a number of meetings with them yesterday. Mm -hmm. And from the summer trip, if you look at data points, we educated the Seattle community about the Special Technology Zones. And okay. if you think about it, I mean, starting a business in Pakistan is very complex. There's so many back-end things that you know, outside investors like myself and folks that want to bring businesses to Pakistan, th we just have no clue of it. What it does is it gives us one window, as they describe it, to interface with them mm -hmm. and then establish, you know, an area where you can construct, you know, uh, offices mm -hmm. and then bring bu businesses in as well, yeah. too. So one of the data points is, is that we have interest from three representations. Um, enterprise zones, folks that actually want to bring their businesses to into them. Pakistan in one of the zones. We've partnered with a zone builder, okay. uh, a local zone builder. And then we've also generated enough interest from investors that we have a few million dollars of soft commitments already. Wow. Right? Nice. And part of the trip here was to actually go and f close that and formalize that with yeah. the Special Technology Zones Authority. Right. So I do think that there is a renewed sense of passion and enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a long journey. 
It's a very complex system. Don't you wish we started 20 years ago? <laughs> I think it's never too late to start. <laughs> but that's, right? a, you know, that's a good approach, yes. And I think about it this way, you know, a lot of us look at outside benchmarks. We compare ourselves hmm. to different countries. And while that's, I think, a good barometer, okay. we have to set our own goalposts. That's yeah. true, We yes. have to look at Pakistan and say, where are we as a country? And just set our own goals. And our biggest competition is actually ourselves. Ourselves, yes. that's true. And even having a goalkeeper does not mean that you cannot score a goal, I think. You know, that's, that's what yeah. continued passion looks like <laughs> as well. And that's how we want you to move forward. But eventually, I think everybody's realized that there's a lot of money in the IT sector or yeah. technology sector. And one way or the other, since we have introduced you as a startup investor and advisor, a lot of people might be getting in touch with you that you know that you guys were here. Yeah. You know, let's do something. Sir, I actually want to kind of invest with you. Sir, please just take the money yeah. and just invest <laughs> it. So we know how things go around as well. But let's come down to this trip, uh, you know, which we yeah. have organized uh, in December 2021. It started yesterday and it's going to be happening today as well and then it's going to end. So what, again, do you have entrepreneurs traveling from USA mm -hmm. or is it more based on Pakistan and we the do. people of Pakistan? We do. In fact, I would say that today we have a day going on in Islamabad. Yep. Tomorrow the delegation is going to Peshawar. Wow. Okay. We have a full day there as well. Okay. And then next week we have two days in Lahore. Wow. So we expanded in the summer. It was just in Islamabad two days. Yeah. Now it's five days over the course of three regions, right? Wow. Well, that's nice. Um, we're going to be building upon it. And inshallah, I think if you look at next year in 2022, we'll probably do a mid-year trip again like we did. Bring more folks in, right? Yeah. So right. It's just the start, from my opinion. Yeah. Wow. Definitely so. And we wish you the best of luck for that. Thank you. But just, uh, you know, one of you did mention that a lot of computer sciences graduates are, uh, well, passing out every year uh, in Pakistan. And, and a lot of them, we happen to know a lot of them as well, Shazad, yeah. until and unless, of course, you're going to make it out of here. <coughs> I don't think there's a lot of employment opportunities here. Things might be changing, inshallah, in the coming year. But uh, from my friends who studied with me and all, they don't have jobs. A lot of them actually found it easier to drop the degree midway and just start working freelance for someone, you know. And I feel that has been the safest option for them. But if you were to change or make a suggestion to change the education system in terms of university, whoever's studying IT and whatsoever, what would be the change that can actually include all those people in the system? Well, I would, I, I'll take this. Yeah. I mean, uh, okay. I do feel that there is an inflection point happening, mm -hmm. right? If you look at just the venture capital money this year alone that's poured into Pakistani startups, yeah. it's about $300 million plus. Okay. This year alone has outstripped the last six years. We're back in 2019. The average venture capital investment was around $10 million. Right? Okay. What that means is a couple of things. First off, job creation. right? With all this capital here, you're going to need to, to have jobs oh, definitely. here. Secondly is skilling. Hmm. Upskilling right now, I think, is not just an uh, acute thing within Pakistan. Mm -hmm. It's systemic. Yeah. I mean, you look at some of the big tech companies, they are looking for uh, skilling, right? Yeah. And, and so I would say that we should look at the education system in a way where you can open up more opportunities for people to learn skills, right. to use hard skills, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, computer science, cloud computing skills. But then the more you can actually give them exposure to real life examples, mm -hmm. you can really bring experience with scaling together, right? Exactly. And I do think there are companies here that are doing that. Remote based is one exa example of a company that's doing that. Not only leveraging skilling and experiential work, but then doing it in a gig economy way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where you don't have to tie yourself to a company in particular, you can kind of freelance. True. Right. And there's a lot of opportunity, I think, for Pakistan to take a leadership position in the mm. gig economy. And that's what I certainly want to yes. talk about as well. So I'll move on to uh, Mr. Mozam Chaudhry over here, who happens to be the president for Open Global once again. But sir, now I have uh, two queries for you, and uh, I'll be as nice as I can be. You know, so first things first, obviously, because you know there are always prerequisites, and Shiza said that how we have actually dropped our number in the ease of business index as well. And you know, just yesterday I was reading it somewhere that now I think for people who actually want to have their own technological startups, the NOC is not even required. You know, so all oh. of those hardships people used to go through before, they're not going to go through. So what are the other initiatives the government has taken to make sure that it's going to be a soft ground for all of the you people who are coming in back to Pakistan and want to invest over here? Or what were those prerequisites which have been taken away just so that majority of the people will get to know because hmm. we go out in 46 different countries. And number two, uh, now over here in Pakistan, the problem is if, if anybody is actually going to employ, take me on for a job, you know, the next day if somebody is going to offer me 10,000 or 15,000, you know, prior to what I was actually earning, 
I'll be like, hey, so yourself, I'm going. <laughs> you know, you look for somebody else. So the <laughs> retainer <you> <laughs> policy is not here, and we certainly do not have that kind of HR system, which might be a problem for companies or big tech companies to come in Pakistan as well, and then vocational trainings and the skill-based trainings. We do lack on that side as well. So what's your take on that? So um, I'll share just share an example on the con in the context of ease of doing business, sure. right? So. Um, yes, the index fell down, uh, but what happened in the past just three months, and uh, uh, the president of Pakistan, Dr. Arif Alvi, uh, okay. reached out to the diaspora, yeah. and he's put, uh, and I'm super impressed the way he's moving things forward and fast enough. Uh, there were taxation issues, there were equity sharing issues, there were how do you take money back, uh, how, what exits do you get uh, in Pakistan, mm. uh, and the things are moving extremely fast. Yeah. Uh, people are bringing their issues and challenges who want to invest in Pakistan, uh, and the, all the ministries and secretaries are sitting in a room. We meet on a monthly basis, and things get solved. By the next meeting, things move forward. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of things are happening. I'm really optimistic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good time to, uh, to be in. Now, the, your second question uh, about uh, there will be attrition. Yeah. There will be competition. I think mm -hmm. that's a good thing. That could, uh, in the early days, it will be painful yeah. to a lot of folks because there's this competition going on amongst uh, different companies. They mm. want to hire the best talent. They're going to uh, uh, pay them uh, above their uh, regular uh, that they're making mm -hmm. uh, salaries. Uh, but what that would trigger is peer pressure. Yeah. They'll say, wow, mm. th 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 this, th there's this fear of missing out. Yeah. Right? What is, there's something happening. I need to upskill myself. I need to do more. Right? I'm going to make more if I do this A, B, C. And what do I leverage, which a meeting that happened yesterday at the uh, PSEB and Ministry of IT, they're launching a lot of certifications. There are a lot of, uh, launching a lot of training initiatives that they're going to do for a lot of these final year grad students, okay. uh, undergrad students as well. And it's all in the spirit of how do we make people more uh, skilled uh, and be ready for the workforce as soon exactly. as they graduate. And that's wonderful. Thank you very much for kind of, uh, you know, wrapping the segment up by this wonderful remark of yours where you said that, you know, we want everybody <coughs> to be skilled as well. But thank you very much, Tamur Saab. Thank you very much, Mazum Saab, for joining us. And, you. you know, we hope to see you again and again. Absolutely. We want you to kind of organize these Pakistan Tech Expo your trips almost every month or even <laughs> in the meantime <laughs> as well. So all the very best uh, to both of you as well. And for everybody who's out there, Ladies and gentlemen, it's all about the skill set. It's all about because these days people are not even focused on the kind of degree you got and what was your GP or CGPA. All they want is that, hey, you know what? You're required to do this. Can you do this? If you can, I think it's a great <laughs> opportunity for everybody out there. And yes, it will have a very positive impact on the job market, the way we're going to prosper. And talking about technology sector, ladies and gentlemen, I think it will be enormous over here in Pakistan, just looking at the neighbors. I think uh, we are on the right track. Thank you very much to the incumbent government. But before we actually head out towards a short break, we actually have small clips to play so that okay. women out there can be more skilled. Let's do that. Okay. Let's can we please that. play those clips? Yes. Let's take a look. And they are totally in relation to the 16 days of activism as well. So please go ahead. Uh, are the 16 days over? Yeah.
खिलाफ तशद नामंजूर औरत के खिलाफ तशद का खात्मा आज औरत है खातन के खिलाफ तशद को बंद कीजिए आज और अभी औरत के खिलाफ तशद का खात्मा आज और अभी औरत के खिलाफ तशद नामंजूर औरत के खिलाफ तशद का खात्मा आज और अभी खातन के खिलाफ तशद को बंद कीजिए आज और अभी औरत के खिलाफ तशद का खात्मा आज और अभी इंसानियत के हवाले से कवानीन के हवाले से आइन के हवाले से खातन के खिलाफ तशद फौरी तौर पर रुक जाना चाहिए हर लेवल पे हमें एहसास है कि इंसानी मसावत और तरक्की के अहदाफ खातन पर तशद के रोकथाम से ही मुमकिन हो सकते हैं औरत के खिलाफ तशद ना मनसूख माशरे के हर फर्द की जिम्मेदारी है कि औरत पे बढ़ते हुए तशद का खात्मा करे औरत पे तशद का खात्मा आज और अभी to well this morning ladies and gentlemen it is an absolutely beautiful morning over <laughs> here how are you feeling about it shahzad i think i'm feeling absolutely fantastic <laughs> and i'm absolutely feeling uh, fantastic about what we'll be talking about yes. instead ladies and gentlemen and you know somebody just spoke in my ear and i just realized hey you know what, what a great time to come to office wow wonderful but other than that ladies and gentlemen <laughs> uh, since you know we kind of did spoke about how the expert community want to help pakistan prosper in the technology sector there are a lot of people in fact quite young who want to bring about a change and a difference that to in the air quality which we breathe that to uh, whatever surrounds us the hmm. flora and the fauna and i am so overwhelmed by this wonderful young lady that she's actually contributing quite a lot in making sure that she's going to make waves and aware all of the people that we really need to contribute and join hands together to make this place a wonderful living heaven Absolutely and you know what before we do introduce her we are going to share with you a small report of what she's doing but Shahzad um don't you feel like this is an absolutely brilliant time uh because we see in front of our eyes teenagers like her or I want to call them kids because literally they are so young kids like her actually having the consciousness of what's going on around the world and trying to do something about it you know being the change that they want to see in the society or you know in the areas around them exactly. isn't that what we want so taking things really? in their own hands yes. as well and making sure that they're going to set an example for a lot of other people out there yes. we're going out in 46 different countries ladies and gentlemen we want each and every one of you to share this story of this very amazing lady all over the globe so that everybody will have that sense of longing towards their motherland as well yes. so please go ahead take a look at this very wonderful informative short report we have made for you once you guys will come back we will be in conversation with this amazing person who is actually making sure that she is going to give us or our future generations fresh air to breathe let's do this a major program under the clean green pakistan movement launched by prime minister of pakistan on 15th of november 2019 to ensure the support of backing of the citizens to the civic bodies for this national effort The CGCP is designed to seek the participation of the citizens voluntarily for keeping the cities clean, improving civic amenities and creating in them the spirit and sense of owning their habitats and cities. Any citizen of Pakistan aspiring to be clean green champion will volunteer to contribute activities. Taking the vision of Prime Minister of Pakistan to the next level, 
Young daughter of Karachi, Zalina Dured, took the initiative to organize the first of its kind's Karachi Green Marathon on Saturday, 25th of December 2021, aimed to promote the clean and green city idea and portray a positive image of Pakistan to the world. This event can help building a greener world eventually. Cause is good, we will be able to get all the trees in the whole Karachi. We will do other events across Pakistan. Inshallah, we will be able to do Islamabad. General public can apply for either one of the categories via the online booking or physically at 8.30 a.m. on December 25th, 2021 before the commencement of the marathon from the starting point. To promote the Green City program, a plantation drive is planned at the urban forest where all contestants will plant a tree before the commencement of the marathon. For the winners of marathons, cash prizes have also been announced. Citizens are appealed to participate in the event in large numbers, not only to support the idea, but to spread the message of clean and green Pakistan throughout the country. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that wonderful, amazing person who thinks that she can contribute quite a lot towards the society and community, just like all of us can. I exactly. think here is a beautiful example to share with you all. We're very lucky that we've been actually joined by the social activist herself, the brain behind Karachi uh, Marathon as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, she happens to be Ms. Zalina Dured. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? So good. How are you? Absolutely, Absolutely perfect. Fine. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you over here. And a lot of people might not even know because that's not because they have not been to our studio, but it's a, it's a green studio as well. <laughs> yeah. If you can see that and you're working on Karachi Green Marathon, it's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> the thought is wonderful and we've spoken about it. Tell us all about it because it's taking place on the 25th of December, yes. which is going to be the after tomorrow. It's Kaid Azam's birthday, so yes. that's why we picked that date. But um, basically, there's a 5K race and there's a 10K race. Registrations are completely free. Um, the fi there's also prize money if anyone's interested. Exactly. <laughs> but, incentive um, is always good. <laughs> incentive is always good. But every runner is going to get uh, participation if they finish it, um, a certificate. And if they win, of course, they'll get some money. And every runner is going to plant a tree at the end or as many wow. trees as they want. Okay. Yeah. And wow. we'll obviously plant more as well. That's so wonderful. You know, the best part is, Shiza, I'm very sorry that you know, a person who's actually going to run for 10 kilometers and win is going to get 75,000 rupees. Yeah. Plus, plus. And the person <laughs> who's going to run for the 5 kilometer marathon, ladies and gentlemen, he or she is going to win. 50,000 plus plus once again. Yeah. I think oh, this right. needs to be out there. There's a first place, second place, third place, fourth place, and a fifth place. Share share with us what, what <laughs> will they be getting? The first place for the 10K is going, it goes from 75, second is 50, third is 35, wow. uh, fourth is 20, yeah. and fifth is 10. Wow. And for the 5K, it starts from 50, 35, 20. 10 and 5. Wow. <laughs> so for all the people who actually do want to be a part of it and make a change, uh, especially in the environment, now you have a legit incentive and that too in terms of money. <laughs> but uh, keeping that aside, you know, wh I think it's great that you thought of prices as well. It is definitely engaging in, um, and socially mobilizing too. But h are you getting sponsors on board for this? What kind of people are uh, partners with you? Yeah. And now, coming back to where you got the idea of it, what made you think of Karachi? Yeah, so why did you think of it? Yeah. I thought of Karachi, I mean, it's where I grew up. Like, I love that city so much. And also, it just kills me to see all the pollution all the time. Mm. And I just feel like the Karachi needs more greenery. So I feel like that's why I chose Karachi. Wow, that's okay. wonderful. Now but, let's uh, talk about you, know, you know, for somebody who's living in Islamabad, obviously, and they are surrounded by a lot of greenery. Yeah. Every single day, all of a sudden came up and thinking about Karachi Green Marathon. Hey, you know what? Let's do that. <laughs> so you know, there has to be a thought process which you might have gone through in the first place and then you did or you might have brainstormed with somebody that, hey, you know what? This is what we should do to save Karachi. And this entire Karachi Green Marathon will be taking place at the Karachi Urban Forest. Am yes, I correct? Yes, it's going to start and finish there. Also, I wanted to say that the male and female are separated. So um, even for the prizes. So okay. All right. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so the first guy... Uh, uh, we'll get 75,000 rupees and the first lady is actually going to get 75,000 yeah. rupees. Wow, that's that's uh, okay. that's good. I but think I'll just start uh, running just to make money <laughs> in life as well. I think I can do a better job than that. So, you know, if that's the way to make people actually 
be healthy, definitely that's the way forward yeah. as well. Coming back to uh, your partners with this, are there some organizations that you sort of engaged with all about that? And also now, now this is a little off topic from the marathon itself, but definitely related to you because you have been a part of, rather you were the brain uh, behind uh, some activities which was very engaging for the minorities especially yeah you had a special focus on them you were training them for education and even art classes for that matter um, how do you feel I don't know if this is gonna make sense but I really wanted to because you're so young I want to understand mm -hmm. how do you get that heart of helping people do you, do you see what I'm saying yeah of course Did you see somebody else doing that when you were growing yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Do, do people inspire Yeah, you? I mean, my parents have always been into philanthropy and they've always, like, gone out of their way to do good in the world. They've always, I mean, the MND Foundation was started by them. They've always tried to do charity work and I feel like they've set a really good example with that. Wow. Mm -hmm. And also, I think for minority children, it was more special to me because I've lived everywhere. So I've also been a minority before, so I know what it feels like. So I just wanted them to have a safe space and also like um, like develop more inclusive school policies for them. Wow, That's and it's so amazing. wonderful because ladies and gentlemen over here, me and Shiza, we always talk about how inclusivity is so important for us to grow as a nation. And I think that, you know, such amazing children doing such wonderful work is something which we can really, we should actually Commend. clap for them, yes, make definitely. sure that we are in some, we're supporting them as well. But so far, uh, you know, how many registrations uh, do we have for the Karachi Green Marathon? So far, we're around 1,500. Um, already? Already, That's yeah. That's nice. But within the next few days, we hope to get around 4,000. Um, oh. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. And each and every one of them will get a chance to plant a tree that to the urban forest. If they yeah. were to, right? Wow. I'm sure, I mean, not everyone who registers shows up, but um, around... A thousand people will probably show up. Be to planting the event. a lot of trees. That's yeah. still huge. That's yeah. still huge to be honest. And we've 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 really planned it like every detail. Like every two kilometers, there'll be a rest stop where there'll be like medical staff on standby and water and rest stops and stuff like that. So it's it's very planned and it's going to be great. Even if you don't want to run it, if you just want to walk it, like it's for Are a good cause. Run? I, I am going to run. Ah, I too. am <laughs> going to run. Of course, I'm going to run. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Re really, you know. So, so while we were talking about if you're going to run as well, people do prepare for marathons quite a lot. You know, yeah. let me be mm -hmm. very honest because my sister, who happens to live in England, you know, so whenever I'm going over there, she's actually most of the time prepping for. Hey, you know what, bhai? You know, I have a 50 kilometer marathon. I have to run so for and you know, things like that. So <laughs> they train. So they train themselves. Have you been training? I have been. Do you have that sense of competition <laughs> that I really need to win that 75,000? That's why we did a, there. instead of a full marathon, it's a 5K and a 10K. So e uh, I've, I think 5K isn't that as bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to run the 10K. Till the time you run. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm right. going to run the 10K. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it, honestly, I don't think there's any shame in walking some of true, it. True, true, true. I think I can run though. I've been practicing a little bit. Wow. I'm not going to... I mean, if, if kids like you, as young as you cannot run, then I think <laughs> we can certainly not run then. You know, I think that's, that does make sense. But, you know, while we play that comprehensive uh, report on what mm -hmm. you're doing and what the MD Foundation is doing, and you said somewhere that you will be going all over the country to make sure yeah. that you raise awareness about how we really need to have green and clean Pakistan, which yes. actually is in line with the vision of our Prime Minister as well, Mr. Mm -hmm. Imran Khan Saab, you know, billion tree tsunami, and then, mm -hmm. you know, they're moving ahead with that. And we do see the results uh, over here in the weather, you know, how it, it do get, it does get beautiful over here in Islamabad, you know, yeah. at times. And so what are your plans, for example, once you get done with the Karachi Green Marathon, mm -hmm. which, ne which city will you be going to next? Because you said that you'll be going all yes. over the country. Yes, the next city we want to do is, uh, I mean, this one's looking like it's going to be successful. Inshallah. So, um, inshallah, we'll do one in Islamabad in March. Yeah. Okay. And after that, we hope to do Lahore. Wow. Obviously, there's a lot of pollution in Lahore, <laughs> too. <laughs> a lot of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, inshallah, in March, uh, one for Islamabad. And then after that, we'll see if we do Lahore as well. Wow, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you said something which I want to pick up on. You said that, inshallah, you know, if Karachi Green Marathon is going to be successful, we might come down to Islamabad. Yes. So don't you think that, God forbid, even if it is the other way, first things first, obviously, you know, since you've had more mm -hmm. than, inshallah, you'll be having more than 4,000 registration. Mm -hmm. So you'll be very occupied over there. Yeah. And you will have <laughs> to do a lot of work. And inshallah, you know, with all our prayers and the kind of initiatives you've taken up and your team, it'll be a success. But God forbid, 
you know, if lesser people show up, don't you think that you'll be coming down to Islamabad even if, you know... Uh, of course, yeah. Yes, it's for a good yeah. cause. We, we really want to do it in Islamabad. If everything goes well and as planned as how we're doing it now, hmm. if everything runs smoothly, then yeah, of course wow. I want to bring it to Islamabad. I live here. I, I, I want to bring <laughs> it here. Well, that is a good idea, and we definitely want the best for you. So best of luck for all your future endeavors. Thank you. But uh, last question, maybe. Uh, second last. I oh, have right, one, yeah. one as well. <laughs> okay, so you tell me, because you're also studying, and you might be actually preparing a lot for getting into a very good university and whatnot. So with all of that happening, with the lockdown happening, and now mm. with this organization that you single-handedly sort of are running, in all honesty, yeah. how are you managing? So actually me and my uh, colleague Michelle Janez are running it together, like we're the leaders of this initiative. Okay. Wow. Like two young women, I think it's great. Brilliant. Yeah. We are inspired to be honest, Thank I guess you. move on. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, I am applying to colleges right now. Uh, it's pretty tough. I mm. hope I get in somewhere good, but inshallah, yes. of course. <laughs> inshallah, and we want to wish you best of luck as well. So, okay, okay, you know, let me take everybody down through the memory lane as well. So first you actually organized a painting competition that too for the children who belong to the minority. In I don't even lo like saying it here in Peshawar. Now you moved on to having a Karachi Green Marathon, which you want to bring down to Islamabad and Lahore yes. and make sure that we plant more and more trees. What's the next step? You know, so paintings, trees, you, because you might be thinking of, okay, I, you know, this is one thing which I want to do as well. And we do think, we do brainstorm when we sit down with our yeah, friends and colleagues course. and families. So what's the plan ahead? I think I have a lot of other um, ideas. Um, especially for the art competition. I've only done a few, so I want to do more because the whole point of it was to like develop more, better school policies, yeah. to like include more children in schools. Wow. Um, and we want to start in Peshawar because obviously a lot of school policies are very outdated and they're not like <laughs> as inclusive as they should be. So that's true. I want to go to more schools for that, wow. for sure. I think that's what I want to start with. And that's you know, I really hope a lot of schools actually do listen to you as well, do exactly. see you working on it too, mm -hmm. because you're really right where you said that uh, private along with public schools, Shazad, we have been talking about it in terms of their policies, especially mm -hmm. on this one. Yeah. Um, there needs to be some work done. But with people like you, Selena, we definitely have some huge hope for Pakistan when we talk about the youth of Pakistan and how they are going to shape the future. You are them. So best of luck for that. Thank you. And so you're much. always welcome here whenever your next project is ongoing. All right. Exactly. And I like the enthusiasm. You know, the energy is there. <laughs> and hey, you know, well, we just want to do get it done. Yes. And we want to wish you best of luck. And I think that she has actually extended that hand of friendship that whenever you want to hmm. be here, we will always be welcoming you you know, for whatever initiative you take towards inclusive education, maybe making Pakistan a greener and a better place to live. Yes. So thank you very much for doing this. Thank and you. And for all of those people who are out there, for all of those children who go to school and university and still ask their parents, hey, mommy, what should I do? You know, I don't know what to do <laughs> with my life. I think she's an example for all of you. Take inspiration. Make sure that you do something, if not even close to her, make sure that you take a step which is going to put you in the right direction. Definitely. A smallest drop actually creates such a huge ripple effect Agreed. that's going to make a change that you, you won't even realize that you were the you know brain behind the change mm. as well. Well, to the next time, take care, you guys. And please make sure to give us your feedback, suggestions, questions, everything on our social media pages with the name of... Well, this morning. And the repeat of this show, you will be able to catch at... Five past midnight. Till the next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning. Take care. Have a great day. <laughs>